Did you know that the Philodendron Painted Lady has been around since the 1960s? This is a plant that I feel like it's only been around for the last couple of years, or at least on trend and more commercially available recently. However, it's been around for over 60 years. Why do you think that might be? Do you think it's because individuals are searching for new plants to add to their collection because the houseplant market is booming, so people are looking for the next big thing? Or do you think it's maybe taken time, perhaps not decades, but taken time to get these plants into circulation, into to make them more commercially available? Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are. I think it might be the former, that people are just searching for new plants, but rather than necessarily searching for new varieties which take time to be created and become commercially available, people are sort of bringing up some of the older ones and bringing them back into the limelight again. So this, as I said, is has been around for more than 60 years. It was created by an individual called Robert Macaulay who actually created many of the other philodendrons that we have or that have recently become back on trend again today. So I will probably do a separate video on that as I found that really interesting as I was researching this plant, just how many plants that are actually sort of created by hybridizing other varieties and just how this came to be. So this is actually a hybrid of two other philodendrons. This in itself, the philodendron painted lady, isn't naturally occurring. This is created from a cross of the philodendron Erebescens, Burgundy and Emerald Queen, which might be where it gets its wonderful colours from. As you can see, it's got these lovely bright green leaves with a golden or sort of yellow mottled variegation across them and patches of green on the leaves too. So the light green might come from the emerald and then it's also got this lovely sort of pink to red stems and new leaves that might come from the burgundy. These are fairly similar to other philodendrons in sort of how they look. You know it's a philodendron when you're looking at it, but they are a little bit brighter, I would say, as you can see from these, the wonderful colors on the leaves. In terms of caring for them, the care is slightly different to other philodendrons, only ever so slightly, um, and that's something that I really need to work on because now that I've got this in my collection, I've been after this for a while, it's been on the wish list and I've finally got this at an amazing price. This I need to then keep alive to keep it in the collection and keep it thriving. They require more light than perhaps other philodendrons do, so I know other phil philodendrons are quite low light tolerant or they prefer to be a little bit further away from the light or have dappled or filtered light. Whereas this one, it seems, needs brighter light, still indirect light, but brighter light than other philodendrons. And that's possibly because the leaves are lighter. So a general rule of thumb with plants is the darker the leaf, the more low light tolerant it is, the lighter the leaf, the more light it needs. That is not a hard rule for all plants, but it's a good general rule of thumb. So that could be why this needs a little bit more light because it does have lighter leaves. And actually, as I was doing the research, it did say that the variegation and sort of the detail on the leaves is what it requires that light for to keep the bright colour and that detail. So quite similar to some other plants, if you've ever had um, crotons or cadeums, they are very, very bright and colourful, but they need light to keep that colour. If you take that light away, they lose some of that colour. So that might be the case with this philodendron. So I need to make sure that it gets the right light levels. It also has similar watering needs to other philodendrons in that they don't like to be overwatered. So I know philodendrons can be prone to root rot. I've actually killed a couple myself by mistake, philodendron birkins to be exact, where I've watered them perhaps too much or maybe they weren't in soil that drained enough and they got root rot and died unfortunately. I do have another one that I have kept alive for a few months so that one's going well so far, touch wood. So what I need to do is make sure that I do the same with this one and not overwater it and make sure that the soil is dry before I water it and then also make sure that the soil is well draining. So I'm gonna double check that that is the case and if it's not, I'll repot it with maybe some soil with extra perlite or core or bark just to make sure that it's loose enough to let the water drain out but also make sure the plant still gets the water that it needs. And the next bit I might struggle a little bit with the time of year that it is. So it's actually winter, it's minus temperatures at the moment here in the UK and it's only gonna get worse. Hence the jumper layering up trying to keep warm. Um, so we're only in December, so it's only gonna get colder um, over the next couple of months. So these plants like higher heat. So 15 to 26 degrees Celsius. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem as I've got the heating on, so that should keep the house warm enough. I mean, the temperature might still drop between the heating being on and off, 
but hopefully that will keep these plants at a suitable temperature. They are indoors, um, just like the other house plants, um, they should be okay because I don't want it to get too cold and then that cause the plant stress and cause it health issues. Conversely, they also like higher humidity than other house plants. So what I'm going to need to do is make sure that I keep humidity levels higher than usual for this particular plant because with that heating on, particularly at the moment over the next couple of months, that naturally causes drier air which then could affect this plant and cause crisping or drying of the leaves which I don't want. So I'm going to try and make sure that I keep the humidity levels higher. So whether that means putting this with other plants to create localised humidity or maybe investing in a humidifier just to make sure that it does get the humidity it needs and that will also benefit the rest of the plants in the collection as you can see sort of in the background and there's lots more on that side of the room so that'll help those out too particularly over this winter period. In terms of fertilising as well I will use a fertiliser, just a general fertiliser maybe every couple of weeks in the growing season when it comes to spring and summer however I won't use any fertiliser now as it's winter as it won't be actively growing, although it does have some new shoots on the top, but it won't be actively growing over the next couple of months. So I'll avoid fertilizer, possibly even reduce the watering a little bit more than usual in line with sort of plant care tips over winter. And then I'll pick that all up back in the spring and hopefully keep strong growth then for next year. And we'll see how those new shoots come out over the next couple of months. I did also say that I would provide an update on my previous plant order. So I will link that video at the end if you haven't seen it. It is the unboxing of a plant order from a new retailer and it's actually where I was meant to get this. I did actually get this plant from, but I was meant to get it from them in the first order that I made. So I made an order as Black Friday sale. They had these plants at such a fantastic price. So they were £79.99 originally, which is a great price for a Philodendron Painted Lady of this size anyway but it was half price, so £39.99, so I had to buy it at that price because I knew I would never find one again at that price, at least not anytime soon with our prices of everything going up, but at least um, not these plants. Made sure that I got it, but when I got the plant order, if you have seen the video, you'll know that the wrong plant came in the order, so I actually received a Philodendron Red Emerald, which in itself was a fantastic plant, lovely colours, great size plant, and equally was the same sort of price, I only paid £39.99 for it, so still a bargain at the price that I paid for it, but it wasn't the Painted Lady that I had ordered. I contacted the retailer to see how we could resolve the issue of being sent the wrong plant, and they were really quick to respond, really apologetic to get this resolved for me. And they sent this out within, it was 24 hours I think, I think I got it the next day. So got this really quickly and this has exceeded expectations. It's a really healthy plant, it's got wonderful leaves on it, it's got lots of new leaves, it's got new growth on it, it's got the big mature leaves as well as. So this has by far exceeded expectation. I was expecting an 80 centimetre plant which would have been about here, but as you've seen it's got about another foot or so of growth on top as well. And as I said, the new growth as well. So it's still growing up, very similar to the Philodendron Red Emerald that I received incorrectly, but I'm really pleased that I did because I've actually really fallen in love with that plant too. So even though it wasn't one that I originally bought or intended to buy, I'm glad that I did receive that now. And both of them even better for the price that I've paid for them. So this was an absolute steal, even at 79.99, which was the full price, for a plant of this size, that's fantastic value for a painted lady. Um, I'm not sure if you'd agree, if you know what sort of the plant prices for painted ladies are in your area, let us know again in the comments below if 79.99 was a good price. But this was actually 50% off, so 39.99 for a plant of this size is, is just unbeatable. I know I'd never get a plant that price, um, or this plant for that price anytime soon, especially with everything going up. So I had to buy it at that excellent Black Friday plant bargain price. The Philodendron Red Emerald was also the same price as of course I bought this and got that instead but I managed to keep that as well at the same price that I paid for it. So again an absolute steal for a Red Emerald of this size as well at £39.99. So incredibly pleased overall. So despite the plant mix-up the retailer was fantastic in resolving it and as I said, really apologetic, fantastic communication, and the rest of the plants and the items that I received were fantastic quality as well. Um, so I will definitely be shopping with them again, especially if they have any plant deals like this one, I'll definitely be buying more. So I hope you found this really useful in learning more about the Philodendron Painted Lady, where it comes from and how to care for it. I will be making another video shortly about the origins of some of the other hybrid Philodendrons that are available on the market, which I found fascinating when I was doing my research for this. 
So if you would like to watch that video, then please do consider hitting the subscribe button and you'll be notified when that video is out. If you've got any other tips for caring for the Painted Lady, as I said, pop them in the comments below, along with any questions that you've got, and I will respond to everyone. I'll link the original video, or the last video, should I say, of the plant order unboxing, where I got the red emerald at the end, if you want to check that out next, and see the red emerald for comparison against this Philodendron Painted Lady. If you like watching plant-related content, then please do check out the other videos on the channel, as we've got things covering all different plant-related topics, and as always, thank you for watching. Grow your well-being.